through any of this. And um, yeah, these are objectives. Basically, um, uh, this talk is just to um, familiarize everybody with uh, what xylazine is and to be aware that it, it's a problem. And um, so if it does show up in our communities, um, you know, we can kind of get the word out. All right. So yeah, trank slash xylazine, what is it? So uh, yeah, xylazine is a um, uh, uh, an alpha-2 agonist similar to clonidine, um, but it's veterinary use. So because it's veterinary, um, it's easy, relatively easy to get a hold of. Folks can uh, buy it online, et cetera. And what happens is um, uh, people who are selling fentanyl will use xylazine to, um, uh, they'll mix it with, they'll mix xylazine with the fentanyl to make the fentanyl go, go longer. Because xylazine is so much less expensive than fentanyl, um, they can have the xylazine in there. If the end user will then uh, take fentanyl or take what they think is just pure fentanyl, and they'll have that sedative, sedating effect that uh, that this um, that xylazine can offer, and either not be aware that it's been cut, or at least uh, you know, at least get some sedation from it. So um, yeah, uh, like clonidine, um, xylazine will like lower blood pressure. It's kind of sedating, and kind of interestingly, we use clonidine to treat opiate withdrawal, the symptoms of opiate withdrawal. And again, you know, as in a central nervous system depressant, and folks can take it in their bodies pretty much any way that uh, they take other drugs, injecting, um, insufflation, swallowing, or inhaling. Um, though usually, uh, and we'll see further, usually this is just when it's mixed with fentanyl. So yeah, here we go. You know, we got, um, uh, you can get a kilogram for six to 20 bucks. And you can then uh, turn around and, and mix that with your fentanyl. And so it increases your profits if you're someone who's, who's um, you know, selling fentanyl. And at least anecdotally, um, xylazine or um, end users who are, are taking xylazine when mixed with fentanyl don't actually want to be taking the xylazine. So xylazine doesn't produce the euphoria that opiates do. So um, someone who's using it, you know, for, um, uh, for that euphoric feeling you know, doesn't get as much of it. So they prefer not to have the xylazine, but, you know, um, uh, they just end up unfortunately getting the fentanyl that's been cut with xylazine. Um, kind of, you know, to demonstrate this, or we can see this in, in that xylazine doesn't really have an independent addiction potential on its own. Folks aren't going out and just buying xylazine and using it. It's only when it's been mixed with fentanyl and their bodies have um, adjusted to the, the presence of the xylazine that they might have withdrawal effects. And so, you know, could be like, you know, quote, addictor, at least dependent, physiologically dependent on xylazine, but, um, uh, you know, not in the same way that they might be with opiates or psychologically dependent in the, in the way with opiates. Okay, so, you know, what, what's the problem, right? Why, why do we worry about xylazine? Well, you know, it's a central nervous system depressant. Um, and um, I think, you know, in the context of opiate use, we're really worried about the, the um, suppression of breathing. And uh, we, there are some uh, fentanyl dose overdoses, or sorry, uh, opiate overdoses that have uh, xylazine associated with them. But when that's the case, apparently there's also um, uh, quite a few other substances. So we have cocaine, heroin, benzodiazepines, alcohol, gabapentin. Um, so, you know, the, the kind of common substances of, of abuse. And um, apparently also um, repeated injection of xylazine is associated with skin ulcers, abscesses, and in related complications. And it, it possibly do some vasoconstriction and subsequent ischemia. Um, we might see, yeah, um, this, uh, you can see an example of kind of what these little spots of necrosis are. So um, uh, if in, um, I know there's kind of a diversity of folks who are, who are attending this talk, if you do see a patient who's got, you know, kind of wounds like this, that might tip you off that like, hey, maybe I should be asking about trank or xylazine. And we'll talk about this a little bit further, but um, it hasn't quite arrived in New Mexico yet, but we're, we're trying to keep an eye out for it. So, yeah, so what you might see, why might you suspect that uh, one of your patients or, or um, consumers is using xylazine or, you know, an, an opiate um, that has been uh, adulterated with xylazine? One is going to be those those um, necrotic spots. Those are the most remarkable. 
the other the other signs of uh, xylazine aren't really specific to xylazine, unfortunately. So, for instance, you might see somebody who has an overdose and they respond very poorly to, to naloxone. And that would be because xylazine is not, you know, doesn't bind to an opioid receptor, so it's not affected by by Narcan. But you know, all the the substances that were listed in the prior slide, um, alcohol, benzodiazepines, gabapentin, etc., those things are also not going to be sensitive to or are not going to respond to Narcan. So if you have somebody who's not responding to Narcan, xylazine might be something you might ask about, like, hey, do you know about what you're taking as being cut with uh, Trank as part of your other questioning? But um, yeah, it's, it's not specific. Similarly, um, let's say someone um, uh, has been using um, opiates that have been cut with um, xylazine and they get on opioid replacement therapy. Uh, they will still have, you know, some residual anxiety, restlessness, dysphoria from that uh, physiological dependence to xylazine that's now absent. Uh, but like we talked about earlier, um, uh, or with, you know, the prior point that this isn't specific to um, uh, xylazine. Um, you could see this with any other substances they might be uh, physio physiologically dependent to. And um, I added this last bullet just because um, someone asked in a prior talk, uh, xylazine is not something that we're expecting to induce psychosis like stimulants will. Okay, so where is xylazine right now? So um, as of April of this year, um, there have been six xylazine-involved deaths that were reported in the, fast, the last five years in New Mexico. So it's showing up, but it's not um, to the level that uh, we see in other regions. Uh, for instance, in Pittsburgh, um, I believe 20% uh, of uh, opiate-related overdose deaths had xylazine involved. So 20% is a big number. And it seems like um, this, if, if the trend didn't start in Pittsburgh, it's at least uh, progressed the fastest, and that appears to be like a hot spot nationwide. And primarily, it's on the East Coast. If you if you look here at um, uh, this table, we can see that um, yeah, in the Northeast, the numbers are the highest. But down here in the West, you know, um, the numbers have been small, but they are increasing. So um, uh, hopefully this fizzles out or for any other reason, we won't see uh, xylazine present in large numbers here. But um, uh, yeah, there's a good chance that we will. So yeah, what can we do? Well, one is um, just keeping, out a, keeping an ear out for any mention of Trank or xylazine. Um, or anything else that people are suspecting that are being um, that they're uh, that the fentanyl or other pills that they're buying on the street are um, you know being adulterated. So um, and the reason you can do that is because this is venues like this or the um, CIT Echo um, talk that I or CIT Echo uh, meetings that I presented this talk to earlier. They, um, th this it's a great venue for us to just be able to share what we're seeing in the state, and so we can increase our awareness. So, um, uh, you know, I think you can do is just educate your consumers or patients about the risks about tranquilizing again, especially if you suspect something like that. And then, if you if you do do come across it, um, let your colleagues know so that we can again be increasingly aware and um, you know step up our efforts to educate. Uh, the public about this health risk. And then we got a quick citation. Okay, so now um, this is, uh, again, a quick review of what you'll need to do to get the uh, the links. And then here's a QR code, and that'll be important. And now I'll open up any questions. I can see a question in the chat box. Oh, I didn't see that. Let's take a look. Okay. Great. Yo, that's a really interesting question. Hmm. Um, I guess I'd have to compare the half-life. Um, yeah, I'm not certain. I think um uh, yeah, it it the um I believe the you'll start to see the effects of withdrawal at 24 hours, and I'm going to ask to at least last three to five days. Um, I think uh, fentanyl. I think because it's so lipophilic, can have some kind of nonlinear and unpredictable um, uh, withdrawal symptoms. So 
Oh, sorry. Okay. So um, uh, I think the answer might just be like, it kind of depends on the use pattern of the, um, the, pa the patient and, um, you know, kind of what you're saying. Um, although, yeah, yeah. So sorry, I can't give you a more specific answer than that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, um, uh, uh, so xylazine is not a potential. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the xylazine withdrawal is not the risk necessarily. The 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 more the risk is that um, you have another substance. Like for instance, um, let's say I'm really searching for that euphoric effect of fentanyl, and I take my usual pill, and um, uh, I only get basically half of that euphoric response that I was looking for. So then maybe I, I take some more fentanyl. I think, oh, you know, this this wasn't as strong, or you know, it's 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 been cut. Uh, so I, let's say I attain the level of euphoria that I was looking for, but now in addition to that, I also have this extra um, respiratory depression that's coming from xylazine. So it's going to put you at a higher risk for overdose. And then on top of that, you've got um, uh, the necrosis. There were some really horrific pictures that I found online of some of the examples of necrosis from xylazine, but they were like so remarkable that I thought it was um, sort of non-helpful. You know, when all the tissue on somebody's arm is basically falling off. Um, that's not really, um, yeah, I mean, sure, suspect, suspect uh, xylazine, but um, I, I thought it was much more likely that you might see in clinic or see somebody present um, just with like, you know, uh, those smaller necrotic spots. But something like that is definitely also a threat to health. Any other questions? I think there are a few other questions, like I don't know whether you already We're not seeing, yeah. What is xylazine used for in veterinary veterinary medicine? Did you oh yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Um, you know, I actually used it in grad school. Um uh when we would um we use xylazine and ketamine to sedate animals or in, in, induce anesthesia rather. Um uh, yeah, so it's it's used as, as basically a sedative. Um uh we use it as an adjunct for for ketamine. Um so it'll you know reduce anxiety. Um, uh, I think that that was the main use we used it for. So I, I should so we don't call it anxiety in in veterinary medicine, but yeah to yeah you know I wondered that too. I've I've heard of crocodile and I don't know enough about it, um, but yeah uh, that 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 uh, it does yeah, and I don't know the mechanism of crocodile's necrosis. So I'm hearing that there hasn't been a lot of reports of xylazine in New Mexico. Is that what I heard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, there's, as far as overdose deaths, there's been six that have been present. Uh, six have found to have xylazine also on board. Um, however, and I'll, I'll go back if y'all have. Uh... Okay. But as far as the DEA, DEA, DEA testing, um, uh, confiscated uh, drugs, they found, um, I guess, 163 instances in the West. So that's, you know, the West is kind of a lot of folks. So yeah, it hasn't quite arrived. It has shown up with the numbers, you know, six in five years. That kind of leads me to suspect that somebody came perhaps from the East Coast with their own kind of personal supply and then, you know, happened to overdose or was just like with somebody. But in terms of like the, um, uh, for lack of a better term, just like the, the commercial apparatus of of, of uh, importing and distributing fentanyl to to our region, xylazine hasn't really been picked up by them. By them, and I, I don't know why. Hey, well, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I think uh, this is it. This is the uh, end of the pre presentation. I hope those who are looking for CE, they can, they is already, they are already got the link and the QR code. And thank you, Dr. Nathan, for uh, such informative uh, presentation. Okay, there is another question I can see in the chat box. Oh, that's a good question. 
Um, hmm. Oh, so the question is, is, is for injected opioids, we suggest that our clients do a test dose first. Uh, do you have any special recommendations about Trank? I don't. Um, perhaps you could just say um, uh, that there has there's something people have been using to um, uh, to, to cut fentanyl or, or opioids, and it will have a sedating effect, but it won't have the euphoric effect. So if they do do a test dose and they notice, I feel sedated, but I'm not getting the either the euphoria or that um, that opiate withdrawal itch scratched quite well enough. Like I still feel kind of sick, even though I've done the same amount, but I, I feel like I'm sedated. If some, if they if, uh, if they notice something in there, that, that would probably be a, a good first pass, a good something to keep an eye out for. Does that make sense? Okay, great. And yeah, lastly, if you had just have any questions about this or, um, uh, you know, you feel like reaching out if you do discover it, um, it's something I'm just kind of curious to see if it does show up and how it develops. And um, uh, and I would, of course, you know, on my end, I would love to pass that around, uh, and make sure my colleagues are aware of it. So yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Yeah, you know, um, uh, it can, so, I mean, obviously the, um, the DEA is able to test for it. Um, I'm not aware if we have a blood test for it specifically, perhaps someone can, someone who might be on here could answer that. Um, so somehow it is able to be detected, you know, and I'm inferring that just based upon the fact that, you know, it's detected in various overdoses. Um, and, uh, but I, I don't know what that looks like. And I'm, I'm not aware of one. That someone can, for instance, like you know, take a take a, a sample of, of the the pills that they buy on the street, and then see if, if fentanyl's in it. I'm sorry, see if uh, xylazine is being used in it. What exactly is it that causes the wounds? Yeah, um, I, I I don't think anyone knows for sure. It's just kind of like a supposition, or just guesses. I found one paper that was. Um, uh, referencing some, um, here we are. Yeah, vasoconstrict, vasoconstriction and ischemia. So clonidine, to my knowledge, doesn't actually do that. Um, but uh, xylazine, I think, also has some action on some other um, uh, um, like uh, peripheral uh, alpha ad adrenergic receptors, I think. Anyway, it can, it can perhaps cause some vasoconstriction, but this is just a guess. We don't really know for sure. But we 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 do know that apparently, it, or we have associated at least with you know these necrotic spots, these ulcers and abscesses. And actually, if you do want to read more, I'm happy to just send you this too. If if anyone's interested, just message me. But uh, here's the list of of um, I think it was two. That I got it. Got it from. Okay. All right, um, Mr. Gordon. I will send you some. Would you? Um, you can either email me or I read my mind. All right. <laughs> I'll send that to you. Oh, um, I, my email should be in there, but just in case it's not, um, here is my email. Feel free to reach out. Nancy, I got yours too. Uh, Dr. Nathan, I can save those emails for you. Oh, thank you so much. I was just taking screenshots. Yeah, me too, okay. trying to copy it. I can email you back. Beautiful.
Okay, uh, so this is it. Uh, anybody have any other question can be can put in the chat box or open yourself by unmuting your mind microphone. If everybody done with their with your questions, then we can end the presentation. And thank you everyone once again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.